Well, good evening. Senator James Langford, glad to be able to connect with you. It's a Wednesday, and uh, we typically do a Java with James. That's a uh, time to be able to grab coffee and sit around and be able to visit for all the folks that are in D.C. on a Wednesday, but you're not in D.C., but I am. Uh, and so with COVID time and everything else going on, we thought we'd uh, continue on the tradition of the Java with James and to give you a quick update of some of the things that's happening in D.C., and it's a crazy busy season right now. Obviously, the big news that's going on is that uh, we're dealing with a $1.9 trillion uh, COVID relief package uh, that's in front of the Senate. This passed in the House. Uh, it had zero support from Republicans on that, and it's coming over to the Senate. And folks have said, oh, this is just typical partisanship. Uh, this is just the way things are in Washington, D.C. And I would say it actually hasn't been in COVID. Uh, so last year, Nancy Pelosi's house, Mitch McConnell and all of us in the Senate worked together on five different COVID bills. All five of them passed with more than 90 votes on them. Some of them passed unanimously and there were big expensive bills because we understand this is a pandemic. There's major issues. We passed five bills totaling $4 trillion in total spending. That's a gigantic number that's never been done in the history of the country before we were facing a real economic crisis and we realized this was a moment we had to do some borrowing to be able to get through this. What's different about this bill is from the very beginning, President Biden and my Democratic colleagues haven't been focused on bipartisan. They've been focused on how big can they make this bill to make it look like they're doing something big. Our focus last year was to negotiate and say, we need to borrow as much as we need to borrow, but not borrow a dime more because all of the COVID spending, 100% of all that spending is all borrowed money. So we need to borrow what we have to borrow, but not borrow more because we got to make sure that we're, we have ability to be able to pay this back and don't sink our economy in the future. Of the $4 trillion that we allocated last year for COVID, only $3 trillion has actually been spent. There's still a trillion dollars unspent. This bill, $2 trillion that uh, Democrats want to be able to pass now, is as big as the bill we did a year ago called the CARES Act. But that was at the very beginning of the pandemic. We're at the end of it at this point. The economy is actually getting better. Things are opening back up. Things are radically different. And I've had some folks say, well, this is for vaccines. This is for all that stuff. I, I wish it was. It's actually not. We still have about $6 billion left in the vaccine account. And just yesterday, President Biden announced that we have all the vaccines already reserved, ready to go through May for every single adult in all of America. So they've got tens of billions of dollars that they're asking for on vaccine money when actually the vaccines are already paid for and there's still leftover in the vaccine account from the previous bills that we did. Uh, so they say it's for testing. Actually, we have $17 billion still left over in the testing account. We don't need more money for testing. It's still there. They've asked for tens of billions of dollars more for testing. Then they've said it's for education. That also sounds good. We want to make sure that we're taking care of education. Obviously, it's much tougher right now. First of all, they put no restrictions for schools to reopen. They just are giving money and with no restriction for actually reopening or requirement that they reopen. I think that's a problem. But the second part of this is there's still about $68 billion unspent education money from the previous bills. They want to add another $130 billion to education. Here's why I say that's so crazy. And we get lost in all these numbers. A typical education bu budget for every school in America for all federal funding for the entire country for a full year is $67 billion. They want to do $133 billion just this year for COVID spending, but there's still unspent money of about $68 billion from last year still in education stuff. So it's not education, it's not vaccine, it's not testing. There's all kinds of different things that are all crammed into this bill that you've heard on the news uh, that are major issues that I just say, everybody needs to take a deep breath. We all want to do something for COVID, but we should be wise in the way that we're doing it to make sure we're focused on what does it take to get our economy back open again, do testing vaccines, but realize everything that we borrow is going to be harder and harder to be able to pay back and is going to add interest. I know we've had a lot of expenses. Those have all been bipartisan in this. We're not on board with this. Uh, we're first asking the question, let's only spend what we have to spend and let's make sure that we're wise in the process on it. That's all this is. And so I, I, it's very unfortunate they're trying to do this on a partisan basis and they're trying to just cram it through and they're trying to say this is messaging. They're just trying to oppose us. 
when we worked together all last year on this with Pelosi's House and all of us Republicans in the Senate, and we found a way to be able to get the things done. So we hope we'll be able to slow this process down. So what's happening now? We still don't have the bill. Uh, it's still not done. Uh, the House passed it, and a lot of folks have said, well, the House, pa House passed the bill. Actually, they passed their bill, but Schumer said he wants to do a total rewrite on it and wants to do a substitute bill, and we don't have that. No one has that text yet. So in a reconciliation, uh, we have to have the text. We have to have time to read it. The, what's called the Congressional Budget Office has to be able to score it. We've heard estimates of $2 trillion, but we really don't know what it is because no one's actually scored it. So we're still waiting for that. They said it would be done two days ago, said it'd be done today. It's still not done. They're now saying it'll be done somewhere around noon tomorrow. Once that starts, we're gonna require them to be able to read the bill on the floor. So this is not a rush. They had originally said they wanna drop the bill then start doing votes right away on it. We've said, stop. We're gonna make you read the bill on the floor so that everyone has time to be able to see the full text of the bill. And then we'll start the amendment process and it'll probably be a couple of days that we're going to push through on amendments and we're asking lots of questions about it because we should it's two trillion dollars that's a reasonable thing to be able to do so that's the next couple of days that you're going to see on that i had a phone call earlier today with some of the leadership of the cdc uh, centers for disease control for the past several weeks i've been really pushing on cdc to start getting guidance out for people that have had vaccines especially senior adults that live in senior centers uh, assisted living facilities, anywhere where people are living together. Most of those folks as senior adults in Oklahoma have already been vaccinated. They were finished their vaccine maybe a month ago for many of them. They want to know now, now what? And for these senior centers and assisted living facilities, they're used to loading up in a bus and going to Walmart and go shop or going to church or getting a chance to see each other or even sitting at tables together to eat. Many people in senior centers are still sitting by themselves in the dining area. They're all asking the same question. I've been vaccinated. Can I see my family again? Can I get out? Even if I wear a mask and go shopping, can I do those things? Because they've been told no, 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 no for 11 months. So I've been working with CDC to say you have got to release guidance on this because there are a lot of seniors really depressed because right or wrong, people said to them almost a year ago, once you get a vaccine, things will be different. Well, they got a vaccine a month ago. They're done with it and nothing's different for them they need some answers. So back on the phone with CDC again today, saying you're the only ones that can really make this call. Every American makes their own decision of what they want to do, but people that live together in senior centers and other things, they really need a CDC guideline as well to be able to go through it, and then they can make their own decisions. So that's going through. Speaking of that, if you're considering the vaccine, do it. Uh, I encourage every Oklahoma to be able to do that. In fact, Oklahoma, if you hadn't heard the news, most people have is one of the top states in the country for actually being vaccinated. So way to go, Oklahomans. Uh, we're getting out there, we're getting the vaccine. Most of the seniors in our state that wanna be vaccinated have already been vaccinated. Opening up the larger groups for teachers, daycare workers, other folks with diabetes and other comorbidities and issues, go get it. Uh, talk, if you meet one person and say they had a, had a side effect on it, uh, I'm sure that's true for some, ask other people. Most people are not getting side effects from it. Uh, but ask around, make your own decision as you go through that. Obviously, we respect the rights of every person to be able to make their own decision. But I encourage you when you get a chance, get the vaccine and actually go through it. Then obviously, we're working through nominations as well. Uh, there's lots of nominations coming through. They've been slowed down. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, there was just a report out today that uh, the nominations are one of the slowest of any president actually getting nominations through. And it's not because the Senate's blocking them. It's because Democrats have done impeachment instead. They're doing this reconciliation bill instead. They're doing other stuff besides President Biden's nominations. Uh, so that's their decision on what they want to be able to do. About half the nominations I've supported and I've said, I may not agree with everything, but the president has the right to be able to make a decision. About half of them I've said, nope, there, there's no way Oklahomans will line up with that philosophically. Uh, so I've been about half and half on the nominations on supporting and not supporting. I'm going to continue to be able to interview each one and to be able to go through the process. That's my constitutional responsibility of advice and consent. And I think that's what people would expect me to be able to do on it. Uh, let me run through. We, we put out a message earlier today saying that I was going to do this time. And if you had questions to be able to send them in, uh, because quite frankly, the, when the questions start popping up, I'm not able to see them as fast as I'd like to. So I've got some questions that actually came in earlier. And if I get a chance to be able to look down, and to see some of these, I'll, I'll get a chance to be able to answer some of those as well. We had uh, uh, Joyce actually sent a question earlier asking about prescription drug prices. Uh, President Trump actually did some executive orders on prescription drug prices. 
President Biden, when he came in, set those aside and said those are Trump executive orders that are gone. A lot of folks on prescription drugs are saying, hey, my drug prices are going to now go up again for insulin because they were limited in the previous executive orders and they want to know what's going to happen. We have not heard from President Biden yet on that, so we'll get back to you. I don't think he's going to try to raise drug prices, but for whatever reason, he just said this was a Trump one and so it's gone. There are several that are like that. There was one on guidance uh, that President Trump put out. Uh, that said every agency, when you put guidance out, you need to put all that guidance in one spot on your website. Uh, so if people that work at a small business want to find out all the guidance for this agency, they'll have one place to go through for that. President Biden came in and cleared that, said that's a Trump idea, so we got to get rid of it. And I asked them, I said, what in, the wrong, what in the world is wrong with just putting all the guidance? So that's not partisan, that's just good government. So we're encouraging to try to reinstate some of these things, and maybe they will. Uh, Jim actually sent me this one. This made me laugh when I saw this earlier today. He said, you choose question. You choose a question format that allows you to cherry pick the questions you want to answer. You don't represent the people of Oklahoma. You're falling step with the radical right and only vote with Moscow Mitch. You won't read this question. There you go, Jim. I read it. Uh, Dave uh, wrote, said, uh, do you not understand the difference between buying groceries and attending a crowded church? You don't understand that any congressional action via legislation regarding the establishment of religion or the practice thereof is a violation of the First Amendment of the Constitution. I guess you're talking about when I said I put an amendment about four weeks ago now that said we shouldn't do federal spending uh, on a city or a state uh, in some of this aid that's coming out to cities and states if that city or state also has restrictions different for an office than they do for a church. In other words, if you can sit next to someone in an office all day and that's legal, but they don't allow you to sit in church next to somebody, we shouldn't allow cities and states to be able to discriminate against people simply because of the content of the speech that's there. California even had a rule saying you couldn't sing in church. Uh, you could go to church but not sing because they said singing will spread the virus more on this. Okay, so stop the craziness on this. I wasn't trying to be able to do anything other than to say on that particular day, on that particular amendment, which I do a lot of things on education and on health issues and on all kinds of stuff in the day, but I also said you shouldn't be able to discriminate against people because of the content of their faith. That's not violating the First Amendment. That's actually protecting uh, the First Amendment. I'm not looking for special privileges for people of faith, whether you're Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, Sikh, Christian, whatever it may be. You don't get special privileges for that, but you shouldn't be punished or treated differently because you're a person of faith, regardless of what your faith is as well. So Dave, we may just disagree on what the First Amendment actually protects you from. I got a message from Renee uh, saying, can we strip all the foreign aid and additional stuff that's inside this Democrat spending money grab bill, please? Actually working on that one, Renee. Um, I, Jeff sent me a message in, say, when do you think the investigation into voter fraud will begin? Well, it's actually already begun. We started asking a lot of questions to try to dig through what happened, not only in the last election, but in multiple elections. You may, many of you may know, after 2016 election, I worked across the aisle with a Democrat uh, saying, okay, what vulnerabilities did we see uh, from the last election that we can fix uh, to be able to go through? So a lot of, with four states that actually have paper ballots that in 2016 didn't have paper ballots, I'm glad that they did. It, it helped a lot with accounting in those states uh, to be able to get that. But you may know that uh, the House has already passed a bill they call H.R. 1. It radically changes voting practice across the country and would totally change the way we do voting in Oklahoma. For instance, uh, they require this bill that Democrats just sent from the House that they want the Senate to take up, and Chuck Schumer, I think, is going to take it up. Uh, I, I'm not going to vote for it because uh, it does things like it removes all voter ID. You can't have any kind of voter identification for any voter in America. So if you require a voter ID like we do in Oklahoma, where to show up and vote, you have to have a driver's license or a water bill or a library card or something with your name on it. Anything at all with your name on it counts as a kind of voter ID on it, just so you can't walk up and say, my name's John Smith, and that's mine right there in the book. Uh, you can't do that. You gotta show something on it. It would strip that away. It would uh, require that we don't count before the vote actually happens that we have to hold our votes open for 10 days. Remember in the last election, the biggest battles that we had were the states that took two weeks to, to count and the absentee votes were all held up and counted at the end. That's what they want to be able to do for every state to be able to do that. They also want to mandate every state does something called ballot harvesting. Uh, that means I could have somebody come by my house and to say, do you have an absentee ballot? Let's fill it out on the porch and I will take it and turn it in for you. So I, I wouldn't mail it or I wouldn't drop it off in an election drop box or wouldn't turn it in myself. 
you could hand it to a third party person. Well, there's all kinds of fraud issues with that. If I just hand my ballot to someone else and count on them to be able to take it, do they change it? Do they alter it? Do they see it? Do they, do they not turn it in because they don't like the ballot? Most people don't go back and look at the voting records and to say, hey, did this person ever turn my stuff in and look up the records? They just count that it actually happened. But if you voted for the wrong person, there's nothing to stop them from just never turning it in. It's a huge problem. Some states allow ballot harvesting. Some states it's illegal. What the Democrats want to do in the House is say every state has to require ballot harvesting. And so total strangers could come by and just start collecting ballots or political activists or whoever it may be can go by and to do that. That's just a really big problem. So right now we're dealing with two different issues. We're trying to deal with what lessons to learn from the last election and can we fix and then try to be able to fight off this HR1 to be able to say, you're trying to find all the things that went wrong in the last election and say, let's do more of that. That's not the way that it should go. Um, so let me, let me do um, just one more. Uh, Jennifer sent a message that says, hey, I haven't got my, the, the last check uh, that came in. It didn't ever come through for me. So what do I do now? Where do I chase it down? Go to irs.gov, G-O-V, irs.gov. There's a section there to saying, hey, looking for my check or missed payments. Uh, to be able to come to you, the uh, economic uh, uh, stimulus payments. Uh, so you can click on that button. It'll help track it. You can put in your address, your information there. It'll ask you for some basic things and it'll say it was already sent or it hasn't been sent. And then if it hasn't been sent, it'll show you how to be able to then write that into your taxes this year when you file your taxes this April the 15th. And it'll actually give you that tax credit then on your taxes if you didn't receive your check. So irs.gov is the place to be able to go to get that. All kinds of issues going on. We could talk for a long time on a lot of things happening. I would just encourage you this week, stay engaged in the news. Uh, we'll continue to be able to work all the way through the weekend on this uh, $1.9 trillion bill that Democrats have told us we'll get the text for tomorrow. We'll start the reading of that after we get the text and then start the amendment process to be able to see where this actually goes in the days ahead. So we'll stay on the task on that. If you've got questions, you can always reach out. Langford.senate.gov is the website, langford.senate.gov. Obviously on our Facebook, at Senator Langford, or any of the other social media sites, at Senator Langford. You're welcome to be able to stay engaged with us. I just ask you one simple thing. Don't believe everything you read on every comment, because not everyone's nice uh, when we get a chance to engage with that. So look forward to getting a chance to see you face-to-face -face in the days ahead. And so glad it's not cold like it was a couple of weeks ago uh, when I got back into Oklahoma. Oh, one more comment on that. Been back and forth talking to a lot of the power companies all over the state and trying to be able to interact with our corporation commission, the power companies, all the different entities. There are a lot of things that are working out on the benefit of the consumer, uh, trying to be able to manage how we're going to pay all these massive bills that came in for all of our power for February and the huge snowstorm and North Pole experience that we all had that week. I was with everybody. That's the actually the only week we haven't been in session all year long was the week of that giant snowstorm and Arctic blast. So I was grateful to be able to be home with my family that week while we were all doing that together, though none of us were excited about the cold. I was glad to be able to do that with my family uh, when all that came down. So God bless you. Take care of each other. We'll get a chance to talk in the days ahead.